Well, it is a joy to be with you this morning. I, um, I, uh, Father Simon asked me a few months ago, knowing that the retreat was coming up, if I was um, willing to, to come to St. Benedict, and I, <laughs> how can you say no? Uh, so I had to obviously run it by the boss first, uh, and he, he said, of course. Father James was um, certainly um, willing to let me come, and, and it's a blessing to, to be with you all this, after, this morning. So I have, I have a couple of questions for you, just based on our gospel from this morning. How many of you would like to own a big, beautiful home on the Northwest Arm? I know that's a loaded question, isn't it? Or how many of you would like to drive a fancy car? That, <laughs> that's not a fancy car. That's actually Father Simon's car. <laughs> but he probably considers it quite fancy, I, I would suspect. No, how about this fancy car? That's a Porsche 911, or 918, sorry, 918. Or how about to own your own jet and be able to fly anywhere you want at any time. Just jump in it and go. <laughs> Sounds like fun? Now, I remember as a little kid, I, I dreamt of all these things. I dreamt about owning a big, beautiful home, and I dreamt about uh, many sports cars, because I was, a, I was a, a bit of a car fanatic, and I guess I still am in certain respects, just a little more mature and realistic. Um, and I just, I dreamt about, a mo I always wanted a motorcycle. Um, just dreamt about having all the things that we, nor you know, that we just naturally want and desire as, as children, as kids, as youths. But the one thing that I never appreciated or sort of uh, anticipated when I thought about owning nice cars and nice homes and jets and bikes and all that stuff was the cost. We never anticipate or appreciate the cost of things. I didn't appreciate the cost of a, a Porsche 918 was $1.7 million. Carbon fiber and titanium and all of that. The cost. We realize as adults the cost of things. Nice homes, nice cars, and so on. As a kid, when you envisioned your dream job, a doctor or a firefighter or a, a fighter pilot, when you thought about your ideal job, did you take into account the cost of the hard work that would go with it, the many hours of studying and, and the expense of the student loans, the realities, the, the physical training, the commitment that would re be required to have your dream job? Or how about when you went on your dream date and you thought, yep, he's the one, or she's the one. Then you, did, you, did you consider the cost of what marriage entails? The cost of marriage. How it's the most self-sacrificing thing that you will ever do. And then of course with marriage comes children. Did you ever consider the cost of children? Having kids is wonderful right? But they come at a cost. Kids keep their parents up at night. When they're really young, and certainly for us as we experienced teenage, you know, Patrick particularly, as a teenager, we could never go to bed until we knew that the door behind him was shut and locked, and then he was home safe. Kids bring stress to our lives. And speaking of Patrick, Patrick cost me my hair. <laughs> I had I had hair before we had Patrick. But when you think about it, most things in life, good things, come at a great cost. In our gospel, Jesus speaks about the three costs of discipleship, of following him. And you can imagine in your mind, it says that great crowds were following Jesus. And I can just imagine him stopping and turning around and going like, whoa, whoa. Do you know what you're doing? Do you appreciate the cost of following me? Of what you're going to give up, what you're going to experience? Because he says, whoever comes to me and does not hate their father and mother, 
spouse and children, brothers and sisters, and yes, even their very life. If you do not hate those things, you cannot be my disciple. Cost number one. And Jesus says, is, is Jesus asking us to hate our families, our spouse and our kids and our mothers and our fathers? No. Or is he asking us to hate our very life? No. But Jesus is exaggerating the point to help them realize that discipleship comes at a great cost. In fact, Jesus tells us to honor our mother and father and to love our family, love our children. He, in fact, even asks us to love our very enemies, which, of course, is a great cost, and how difficult that can be. What Jesus is saying is that we are to love God more than anything or anyone, including our families, parents, and yes, even ourselves. Jesus laid down his life for us, and he asks us if we are to follow him to do the same. Cost number two, he says, whoever does not carry their cross cannot follow me, cannot be my disciple. Whatever our cost, whatever our cross, Jesus asks us to carry it and to follow him. And some crosses are incredibly heavy and difficult to carry. I am in awe of those who Christ asks to carry heavy crosses. Broken marriages, infertility, addictions, strained family relations, the death of a child, loneliness. illness. Whatever our burden, whatever our cross, Jesus asks us to carry it. Cost number three, whoever does not give up all their possessions cannot be my disciple. In chapter 19 of Matthew's Gospel, we, hear this, we see this encounter and experience this encounter of Jesus with the rich young man. And he tells Jesus that he has kept the faith. He has observed all the Jewish law. And says that Jesus looked at him and loved him. And said, you lack one thing. One thing kept him from being a disciple, from following Jesus. He says, go and sell all your possessions, give the money to the poor, and come follow me. And says the, the young man went away grieved and distressed because he had many possessions. The love of things, of stuff, is not the way of discipleship. And Jesus calls us to a life of detachment of these things and to look for him, to look to him for our needs. In our gospel, Jesus t tells two parables of estimating the cost. He says, which of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it? Or which king who goes out to wage war against another king does not first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to oppose someone who has 20,000. In both cases, Jesus is saying that if estimating the cost is not done correctly, the results can be disastrous. In the case of building a tower, you will be bankrupt because you will have run out of money and unable to finish the project. You will lose your stuff. And in respect to the king, if he is not victorious against the other king, he will likely be killed. He will lose his life. So it's the importance of estimating the cost before we begin. We must sit down and consider the cost of following Jesus. 
One of the reasons to consider the cost is because we live in a world and a culture that is challenging for a Christian. You may experience ridicule for your faith from a coworker or a neighbor or even someone from your own family. Now in 2017, I've told this story before, but I know there's many of you who probably haven't heard it, but I lost a job because of my faith in 2017. I was meeting with my manager and she noticed that I had a crucifix on my wall. It had been there for years and she asked me to take it down. In two subsequent meetings, she asked me to take it down. And the third time she asked me, she said it was against com company policy. And I said to her, the day you make me take that cross down off the wall is the day you can fire me. So four months later, <laughs> the cross went in a box along with all my other stuff because my job was terminated. And that's a scary time. Being unemployed is not fun. But the story does end well because I found another job. And it's been five years and that crucifix hangs on the wall in my new office. And although I've had many people ask me about it, I've never had anyone ask me to take it down. There are times in our lives as followers, as disciples, where we are asked to be public witnesses for Christ. And I share this story only to let you know that if you've experienced the same, that many of us have similar experiences. Jesus warns us that the cost of discipleship is expensive, and this life is not easy. The cost of discipleship sometimes means leaving a parish that you love and are loved. I'm not going to mention any names. But if you're asked to be obedient to your bishop, you be obedient to your bishop. But there is great joy in returning, even if it is only for a weekend. We serve Jesus, we follow Jesus, and we serve his church, his people, all you beautiful people. The cost of discipleship, speaking for myself, although expensive, is an absolute bargain. Speaking on the cost of discipleship, in his book, Desiring God, D.A. Carson says this. He says, the kingdom of heaven, which is all what we're looking for, which is all who, where we are moving to. The kingdom of heaven is worth infinitely more than the cost of discipleship. The cost is worth it. For those who know where the treasure lies, joyfully abandoning everything, everything else. They desire to secure it.